Some skeptics were convinced that captive bred lions could never be released into the wild. Would the lions be able to fend for themselves? Would their social structures remain intact? Would they be able to successfully hunt? Follow this engaging African story of a few extraordinary people working with extraordinary lions. Known as Alert, this groundbreaking program has one mission. Return Africa's lion population back to its former glory. up in this gripping episode. We get a first time peek at the adorable additions in the denning enclosure. Lewa and Naimi take their hunting skills to a new level and tackle a kudu. Find out what Ray's doing with hyena poo. A historical kill is notched up by the pea lines. Bloodthirsty and gamma pride strike again. Meet the tiny cub's new dad. And Kwali takes a nasty bite to the cheek. Can she hang on to her prize? Stage rehabilitation and release into the wild program overseen by Alert is growing from strength to strength and likely setting the pathway for restoring Africa's declining lion population. The research team are delighted with this progress. Today's kind of a pivotal moment for the Pride. Um, 81's turned, Wakanak has turned 18 months old. Um, to many, it may not seem like a significant age. But in terms of your, your study, a lot of your wild prize studies, when looking at cubs, often what they'll refer to a cub becoming a sub-adult adult at 18 months. This is almost a cut-off period from when a cub is in danger. Up to about 12 months old, a cub is still um, at risk from so many environmental stresses. Um, other lions, hyena, elephant, buffalo, birds of prey, snakes, a vast array of things. Um, and reaching 18 months, um, they are completely out of that danger zone and stuff. And now she's in that transgression period where she's going to become a fully fledged pride member, a full lioness. Um, so it's, it's really exciting for us. Um, it's just highlights how successful this program is. And um, she's such an important cub and she has no idea. Um, and we're seeing the same um, seen the other cubs in the pride thriving just as much and hopefully we'll be celebrating their 18 month old birthdays as well but it's important that the people realize how important this program is and what a difference it is making um, and wakanak is kind of um, a flagship for that this groundbreaking program called african lion and environmental research trust also known as alert is growing from strength to strength and likely setting the pathway for restoring Africa's declining lion population. The research team are delighted with this progress. Hot off the press news, has the researchers and volunteers buzzing with anticipation. Soraya has produced three adorable cubs and she has brought them out into the open for the first time. And it's a great cause for celebration. Fully 
opened yet as they clumsily explore the surroundings. Over to the breeding enclosures, it's breakfast time, and the volunteers have to get their hands dirty. The volunteers have prepared four delicious pieces of beef, and the four adults are beside themselves in anticipation. The large male is affectionately known by the volunteers as Shredder, for good reason. Shredder has two rules. One, he must at all costs have the largest succulent piece of beef. And two, Shredder does not enjoy being watched while dining. The lionesses have to succumb to his supremacy and despite fighting back, have to concede and settle for whichever piece Shredder doesn't want. It's a man's world out here. Meanwhile, in the main park, Lewa and Laili are enthusiastic about their morning walk. are at their playful best this morning. But all this play is important as it hones their skills needed for hunting. The crown plovers they are stalking today have the lion's full attention. But that's part of the plan for the birds as they distract the elves away from their nest. Researchers and volunteers use this opportunity to record the spore measurements. Collating measurements of cubs and adults on a monthly basis helps to contribute to an age and sex guide based on spore size. By taking a few simple measurements, one can then estimate confidently the approximate age and gender of the individual lion. It doesn't take long until something catches Laili's eye. Over to senior lion handler, McKay, who relays the story. Yeah, we're just walking towards the dam wall there, and then Laili simple spotted the kudu, and she went down the dam wall. Uh, at first, she spotted the male kudu. She chased it. She was uh, almost about uh, 20 meters to 15 meters away from it. And then the male kudu was too fast for her. And when she turned around, uh, Lewa was uh, chasing the female one behind her. And then she saw the female kudu running towards her, and then she had to hide behind the tree. And then as the female kudu just tried to go past her, she simply jumped on the back of it. And then at first she was kicked away, and then she wake up, chased the female kudu for the second time, just for about 50 meters down here, and then she caught it very quick. It was almost about uh, two minutes. When I arrived there, they were uh, they were working as a team. Lewa was biting the neck and then uh, Laila at the back. Lewa went for the neck and suffocated it until it died. This is the L's first major daytime kill and a wonderful milestone in their life. It's one of those lazy days at Antelope Park and everyone seems to be nodding off. 
from the tiny cubs to big Milo. However, two of the Angama cubs, Anopa and Amadi, have no intention of keeping the peace. They may not have chosen the best playground though. Milo is not in the mood for child's play. Despite multiple warnings from Milo, the cubs just can't resist, and Milo is forced to find another siesta spot. It's a crisp winter's morning, and the pea lions are up for their walk. Um, so we took the chippies out of their enclosure. They were quite playful to begin with, um, playing with each other, not really taking much interest in us. Then we came across uh, some zebra um, and they gave chase, both of them gave chase with the zebra. Um, and from that we found some of the giraffe as well. Um, they both went after the giraffe, Penny had been a lot more active than what Pazza was. So yeah, then once we left the giraffe, um, we actually spotted a herd of wildebeest. Um, so we walked towards them and then we lost sight of Penny. She went into thickets. We couldn't see her, Pazza was still with us. Um, but Penny could just completely disappeared. Um, we thought that she was, we, she was stalking through, um, but we weren't sure. Um, and then we saw her give chase, and then we lost visual again. So yeah, after we um, briefly saw Penny give chase, we saw the whole herd of wildebeest um, running off. There was a lot of dust around. Then one of the line handlers and I heard a distress dress call of the wildebeest. Um, so we thought that she may be on the back of it. So we went running towards her. Pazza was still with us. Um, she, hadn't, she hadn't chased at all. So Pazza came with us uh, and we arrived at the scene to find Penya clamped on the, the neck of a suburb up wildebeest. And then Penya decided that she, she was going to let go of the wildebeest. So she let go and the wildebeest got back up to its feet. Um, and Pazza was straight on the back of it. She jumped straight on the back to try and bring it back down to the ground again while Penya looked on. Up until now, the peas had only killed small prey, such as water monitors and hares. So this is a huge upgrade in the food chain. Who could have taught these captive bread lions to go straight for the throat? This is pure instinct, and they've simply been given the chance to do what lions do best. It's a momentous occasion and cause for celebration for the peas. We leave them to feast on their prize and visit the three new cubs. Back at Soraya's den, the little cubs are looking healthy and enjoying each other's company. One program, the time has come for a bit of a shock in their lives, as Dan explains. Right, we're here at Bush Enclosure today with Soraya and Sahara. Soraya is the mother of three cubs, 
Uh, the cubs have been with the mother for the last three weeks. Very important that they stay about three weeks with the mother for colostrum, which is something the mother produces. Helps the cubs be extra healthy. Um, we're going to remove the cubs today. Reason being is if you leave them in any longer, they will become very uh, attached to the mother and they don't become attached to humans, which is exactly what we need to facilitate them to feel safe in the first stages when they're hunting. Despite being only three weeks old, these little snappers still show their pedigree as being top predators, with a little attitude to boot. Even Ephraim is on his guard. Ephraim handles the cubs as their mother would. He carries them by the scruff of their neck. This doesn't cause the cubs any pain, and hopefully doesn't cause him any either. One last fighter in the box, and they swiftly move them off to their new home. elected to be the cub's new mum, and being potential walking lions, this early bond will ensure safety in the future with humans. Being midwinter, the cubs will spend the first week at Dan's house to keep them warm and well monitored. Because Dan's name begins with D, these cubs will be the D lions. Dan has named the two females, Dala and Deza, and the male, Dingani. These cubs will be meticulously cleaned and bottle fed to prevent any disease and infections. We leave the very capable Auntie Dan and visit the Angama Pride in the release site to find Narnia scurrying up a tree for a better view of the surroundings. Wakanaka attempts to be a copycat and doesn't quite follow through. Ray has an interesting experiment for the pride today. Um, we've come into the release site this afternoon um, with a nice big bag of hyena poo that was donated to us kindly by an associate. Um, the plan is basically to test out how our pride here react. The pride here are in stage two. They are yet to encounter predators and competitors such as hyena. That will be stage three. But we just want to see is there perhaps some sort of instinct, some competitive instinct. Um, we've deposited three lots um, just by the water hole here. The lions have just fed on uh, a zebra, so now they're going to be lazing around here for the afternoon. We've had Nala already come up and had a few sniffs of a couple of the piles. She's grimaced as, ex as expected, um, and then she's moved off, not showing a vast amount of interest. What I'm really looking out for is the cubs. Obviously, they're going to be the most curious of the pride. Um, may even say, see a little bit of play behaviour with it. Um, we're not really expecting any overt behaviour, any over-the-top um, results. It's just literally out of curiosity. And then tomorrow we have a playback of some hyenas, which we're going to play into the site and see how they react to that as well. Having never experienced other predators, this research is important in order to observe if the lion's natural instinct is to defend their territory and themselves. In fact, yeah, just make a note, Nala's just done a territorial scrape in between two of the, uh, the piles. By having some interest in the hyena poo, the lion are showing their intuition and curiosity. But with no threat to be seen or heard, the pride relax and continue with their play.
Kenya and Paza are in a lively spirit this evening, constantly exploring and gallivanting around. Their sundown walk leads them down to a pool of water and gives the volunteers something to laugh about. Curiosity gets the better of Pena as she investigates further. There are catfish in this pool and no doubt have her interested. Pena, although slightly embarrassed by her mishap, is still intrigued by the catfish in the water. Their interest soon wanes and they carry on with their adventure. Antelope Park has been established for over 20 years, but their program was not a planned project, but rather evolved by chance. Nathan explains. So this release program was, was established. Um, it was established here at Antelope Park, sort of by accident really. The owner, the, the, the current owner of Antelope Park, somewhere or another got some cubs, lions that bred in his enclosures. Uh, it's not uncommon for, for wildlife anywhere, in captivity or in the wild, to um, abandon their offspring for, for whatever reason. It's something that happens. If animals are not perfect, they don't generally belong in the bush. They don't, they don't survive long. Lions have suffered a staggering 80 to 90% population decline since the 1970s and have vanished from 83% of their possible range. The increased media attention surrounding the lion's plight ignited the rehabilitation and release into the wild program. Anyway, so a similar situation happened in an enclosure. Mother uh, abandoned some cubs, and the sound of them crying didn't really affect her too much. Things like sympathy and mercy are all very human and printed emotions that don't really exist in the bush. So the mother was quite happy to sit and listen to these cubs cry. They weren't, so, so they took them out, raised them up, uh, gave them a bottle, um, became essentially part of the family. And family tradition was they used to walk down to the river every day We're with the dogs. When the lions got a bit older, they would, they would follow. And, and the natural instincts of these animals, when, when they came across game, started to come out, started to show through. As they were getting a little bit older, they were getting better at it. They were getting more exposure to it. Um, and, and that's really where this all started, where this, um, this, this release program started. In the very near future, with the collaboration of African governments, Antelope Park and the Alert Program will release lion back into their natural habitats in countries where lions no longer exist. Over to Ray, who has a part B to the hyena poo experiment. In order for the lions to associate the poo with the appropriate sound, Ray has arranged a hyena call recording to play from three kilometers away. The reaction is immediate. Milo is aware of the possible invasion of another species and leads the cubs and the rest of the pride to the fence line to observe closer. Hello, Di, come in. Uh, guys, that's fine, you can switch off. Thanks very much, you've got all the lines full attention. <laughs> Thanks very much, guys. Milo is aware of the possible invasion of another species and leads the cubs and the rest of the pride towards the calls of the competitive species. It's a typical wild reaction and just what the researchers were hoping for. As the pride wait patiently at the fence for any more hyena calls, the cubs take on the termite mound to pass the time and amuse themselves well into the evening.
Another wonderful glow highlights a new day at Antelope Park, and we join the pea lions on a walk with researcher Kirsty. Okay, so the wildebeest really was the, the two peas. It was their first big kill, and um, they'd made smaller kills before. So now we're seeing a completely different attitude um, with these guys. So they've now realised, you know, what walks are all about, and they're much more proactive when it comes to hunting. Uh, as soon as they see them game, they're off, especially Pena. And that's exactly what we want. Um, that first kill, the first big kill, is so significant in their lives. Uh, and from now on, that's, that's going to encourage them to go off and hunt more and more uh, and utilise the time out on walks for hunting rather than just playing and sort of resting. Character-wise, both Penny and Paza are quite playful lions. Um, we're beginning to see that Penny is actually probably going to be the best hunter out of the two, although Paza does show a huge interest in hunting as well. Uh, Penya seems to understand more about at the moment what she needs to do. Um, She's also a lot more independent than Paza. Um, she, she's got no real interest in sitting with people. Um, she likes to go off by herself. Um, Paza's a lot more social um, and she's quite happy to greet people and be part of that. But at the same time, um, like I said, she, she enjoys to hunt as well. She's good at hunting. So it's a nice balance between the two we've got here. We've got a quite a social lion, then also a, a good hunter as well. So when it comes to putting them into a pride together, we've got different roles covered with these two lions. Moving over to the L lions, they too are developing a lust for hunting and continue pursuing the zebra. Big stallion ninja zebra are still making it difficult, but Laili in particular will never give up trying. of time before the zebra make a mistake and create opportunities for the lions to target the zebra foals. For now, practice makes perfect. However, the Angamo Pride and the release site are already a thriving strike force and currently have their sights set on zebra. first to give chase. And by the time we catch up, Ashanti has the zebra by the throat. away, the rest of the pride are resting by the waterhole, unaware of their sister's success. The rest of the pride will soon discover the kill, but for now, Ashanti and Nala will take full advantage of this meal. Over the last few years, Alert and the Rehabilitation and Release into the Wild program have been criticised for using captive-born animals in a reintroduction program. The captive-born adults of the program are never to be released into wild areas. Only those wild-born cubs, such as the Angamo cubs, raised with no human interaction and a natural fear of people, are to be released. Probably the most frustrating things that I find with the program is from the people that criticise us from overseas countries. They're negative about the program, they don't believe it can work because of whatever previous stigmas. And we always invite people to come, we're open to debate, we're open to discussion, this, that and the other. You cannot criticise something if you just looked at it on your computer screen from 6,000 miles away. More and more people are seeing what we're doing and, and understanding the necessity for it. Our critic base 
and our adversities is, come right, is, is coming down at a really nice rate. People are all starting to eat a lot of humble pie. And our support base is going up. So it's creating that awareness as well as correcting as such the criticism. Our biggest criticism before this release site was that our captive bred lions could not hunt. They say that captive bred lions cannot survive in the wild. And I understand where people come from, but they need to see what we're doing. And those who have come and, and seen what we're doing, seen the evidence in these lions, they've said, OK, these guys have actually got a very good in situ conservation program here. I mean, they've taken plus 200 zebra, plus 200 wildebeest, I don't know how many impala, uh, in, in a matter of two years. It's, uh, it's, it's not, uh, the fact they can hunt is, it's proven. They prove it every day. This can work and does work and will work. The following morning shows the Ngama pride drinking close to where they killed the zebra last night. Milo, Kenge and Wakanaka are still nowhere to be seen. When the researchers finally locate Milo, he is making a very blatant approach at a group of zebra and impala. As the zebras retreat from the obvious danger, what they don't realize is that they are walking into the path of Kenge and Wakanaka, who have flanked them whilst Milo had their attention. The chase is on, and even Milo is showing intent. It's difficult keeping up with these chases with the vehicle, but as we draw close, Kenge has already silenced the zebra, and Milo uses his weight to keep the zebra down. allows Milo to the lion's share and rests a while. As the sun rises, Milo drags the zebra to good cover for shade. In the meantime, Ashanti is also relocating some of last night's scraps. But amazingly, Narnia has also killed a zebra and drags her prize into cover too. Three zebra kills in the space of 24 hours is astonishing but lions will use every opportunity that comes along. While the Ngama cubs feast on a fresh kill, the Ds are feeding on milk and adapting to their new home. They are closely monitored by Dan and the volunteers, and the bonding process is going well. Sharp, and the cameraman gets a wake-up call. The peas have begun their early morning walk with great enthusiasm. Play is high on their agenda as they haven't seen much game today. are on standby to help them out. Uh, we are currently cutting up a cow and then um, make sure there's the right vitamins in there as well and um, using it to feed the, two, the four younger cubs and then also the, the big breeding um, lions out here in the breeding center. I didn't really eat beef before I came to this event. But now that I'm seeing this, I'm, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to go vegetarian now. And um, I also don't really have a strong stomach, so I'm kind of having to stay back a little bit. And as you can see, I got, I've been, I've been wearing this all the whole time. This, this is my, like, secret weapon. And then um, Vicks rub underneath my nose so it blocks out the smell. It's not working, though. I can still smell it. <laughs> it's disgusting, <laughs> I think. But I know it's necessary for the lions to get food, so... This is the first time I've ever seen like a whole cow dead and chopping it up. It's not, <laughs> it's not good for the stomach. 
The ever willing volunteers take the tasty pieces straight to the peas enclosure and place the bits in cunning positions. It shouldn't be too easy for the lions, right? On cue, Pena is up the tree in a flash, while Paza takes a little time to spot her piece. Part of the ongoing territorial research, today Ray is experimenting with how the pride will react to the roars of other lions. Can you guys hear it? Gary, Gary, please come in. Confirm it's playing on full. Milo instantly responds to the sound of an unfamiliar lion and runs off to defend his pride against intruders. And he's off. Good lad. The rest of the pride follow with interest, and Ray is delighted with this reaction. This is awesome. Okay, we've just performed our fifth territorial study um, using a playback of eight lions, a mixture of males and females. What's been really interesting, we've had a much more um, full-on reaction from the whole pride. Milo led um, all the females towards the fence line where we've played um, the recording. What was really interesting to see um, was the younger cubs. They are now eight and nine months. Um, the three females of those four, they also followed. They were lagging behind, but the fact that they approached alongside the females is a really positive sign that they are starting to grasp this whole idea of what it means to be uh, a territorial animal. The whole reason the line is social is to defend the territory, so it's so important that they're coming to grips with this. Um, and eight months is that kind of period their female cubs will actively partake in this. Um, so overall, a really, really good experiment. This evening, Milo makes everyone know that he controls this territory. The D cubs are now four weeks old, and we catch up to the ever capable mother, Auntie Dan. The cubs have been out for four days now. They're doing very well. They're very fat and healthy and vocal. Um, they're eating, drinking lots of milk uh, every four hours. They've all each got their own different characteristics. Uh, the smaller female is quite skittish, quite scared. Um, and the bigger female is very cheeky. She's going to be a handful. The male is <coughs> a typical male. He likes to sleep a lot and eat far too much. And the male actually was the runt of the litter, so it's good to see that he's. It's good to see that he's eating lots. You see this cub here is the male. This is Dingani. Uh, I chose Dingani. It's a Zulu king. It's a very nice name. Very strong masculine name. As you can see, they're very happy and healthy, um, and they're in their new den which we have built today. Come in. Uh, do you have Milo with you? The researchers are on their daily rounds in the Ngamo site when they notice the cats on the prowl. Kwali has caught sight of a resting zebra and stays low. With the 
element of surprise and good grass cover. This should be an absolute gift for Kuali. defense is a nasty bite to Kuali's cheek, but this has little effect as the zebra surrenders to the big cat's grasp. Kenge and two of the cubs have heard the commotion and come in for the feast. Kenge instinctively goes for the throat to put the zebra out of its misery quickly. It's been a bloodthirsty season for the Ngama Pride this winter, and nothing will slow them down. This pride have become very capable hunters, and it won't be long until they're ready for stage three, where they will share a reserve with competitive species, such as hyena, and have bigger prey variety like buffalo. Things are looking positive for the alert program, and with this documented success, many past critics are seeing the merit of this vision for Africa. The next episode promises to be jam-packed with much excitement when Penya and Paza encounter a python. The adorable Dees go on their first bush outing. Lewe and Laili keep the zebra on their toes. The Ngama girls have pretty nasty table manners. The research team have more experiments for the Ngamo lions. The seas take down the wildebeest. Antelope Park welcome VIP guests from Burundi. Kenya and Paza don't give up on Zebra. And Milo and Kenge make another striking hit. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>